Good morning. It is the third Sunday in Lent, and this morning we welcome to our service for the St. George's Parish family, Bishop Todd Townsend, who will be our preacher. Lord, open our lips. And our shall shall proclaim proclaim your praise. Praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know each of us by name and make yourself known to those who seek you. Your wisdom delights the human heart and purifies the soul. We take this moment to bask in your presence with us, to know, to truly know that we are loved by you and to listen for your word for our times and for our lives. God, our creator, redeemer and sustainer in this unusual yet sincere time of worship, we offer you ourselves with all of our strengths and weaknesses to respond to the needs of your children who you love and to do our part to sustain the world you have entrusted to our care. But first, let us remember the things we have done, the words we have spoken, the thoughts we have had, which got in the way of the good you would have us do, and the love you would have us live out in our day-to-day -day encounters. And so together we say, we confess we are often distracted from your presence. Many things compete for our attention. We are tempted to seek things that cannot truly satisfy. We envy those who are successful in the world's terms and so pursue our own desires without questioning the cost to the earth or those in need. Forgive us, O God. Send us the Holy Spirit to awaken us to your purposes and pursue them with renewed commitment. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now the collect for this day. God of the covenant, give us zeal to discern both the foolishness and the wisdom of this present age, so that we may proclaim Christ crucified, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The first lesson today is brought to us from the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, neither in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath it, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or alien resident in any of your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he resteth on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. 
Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. These are the commandments of God. We say together our canticle for this day. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for scattering, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. A reading from the Gospel of John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Grace and peace to you. It's a pleasure to be part of the online liturgy today with you at St. George's, especially at the invitation of Bishop Terry, who's been such a wonderful leader for you in the interim and a friend and mentor to me since the time of my youth. I'd like to congratulate you on the appointment of Reverend Aidan Armstrong as your next rector. Aidan's a gifted and faithful person a priest and pastor who will guide and lead you very, very well in the years to come. And Aidan builds on decades of great leadership, both clergy and lay, in your congregation and in your neighborhood that you've all enjoyed. Thank you to Ken Andrews and the members of the selection committee, the church wardens, and all who have lovingly and faithfully cared for the church through this time. Uh, we pray for Aidan, Sarah, and their kids and the Church of the Ascension in Sudbury during the time of transition. God is good, and God will guide us. The readings for the third Sunday in Lent this year have us looking at Exodus chapter 20, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, and then the Gospel, we see Jesus in the temple, throwing things around, trying to stop having commerce happen in the place of communion. 
The Ten Commandments, as you know, are a summary of the larger law, and we've learned them over the years from our various ways. No other gods, no idols, don't abuse the name of the Lord, remember the Sabbath, honor your parents. Notice that there's guidance in it. It isn't just prohibiting things. Although it does say no murder, no adultery, no stealing, uh, don't be a lying witness, a false witness, and don't covet. This is more than just good advice, of course. It's a way to stay in covenant with God and with your community, your neighbor. That's what the law is. And this part begins with, with God saying directly to us, I'm Yahweh, your God. I saved you and I make you free. You can trust me. I'm here, I'm alive, and I want to have a covenant relationship with you. So here's a little list of 10 things you can do that'll help you not to mess it up. And it'll give you a way to stay on the path to life. If you fail and, and break these things, you haven't just broken little laws, you've, you've broken away the very fiber of the relationship with me, says the Lord. So these commandments are an outer boundary, but it's also a way to live within the circle of the covenant. And the law can be seen that way as a very positive statement, a positive content. It's a guide for the redeemed people of God. It guards against the way of death and points us to the way of life. And of course, so does Jesus, and we see him in the gospel in the temple. He's upset. In the temple, he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and, and the money changers were there, seated at their tables, ready to make a bit from the requirements of the law. So upsetting the tables and making a whip to drive them out, Jesus hollers, get out! Stop making my father's house a marketplace. It is not a marketplace. A marketplace trades on the rules of a market. But just this much of this is traded for that much of that. These two doves traded for this divine favor. So Jesus had something to say about undoing this whole system with his life, this system of sacrifices, exchanging lives for peace. What he was going to do is give his own life, his own body, and then have it raised up again in three days, putting an end to that kind of sacrifice. So he throws them out, saying it doesn't work that way. You can't barter with God. You can't pull out your wallet and say to God, you gave me this life, now what do I owe you? It's not based on market ideals or business principles. It's based on putting your body on the line, your life on the line, as a work of love for others. That's the example. That's what Jesus did. That's the one we follow. The perfect icon, as it says in Colossians, the icon, not the idol of God. Through his life and through his body, we see what God is really like in Jesus. And it's good to make this distinction between idols that are prohibited and icons. Idols are constructed. Your life is like that. You're, 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 you're a self-made person. Your meaning is grave and not given. But idols can't speak. They can't bring anything new. They can't give life. It's just a mirror of something either alive but probably dead. But if you're an icon, you are marvelous and translucent and you focus people on what comes from God and what can be seen and lived in God. You become a way to God. So that's my prayer for you as individuals and as a church community that you would be given the continuing gift of seeing the way to God through our Lord Jesus Christ and being an icon for that kind of sacrifice and love. Hope to see you all soon. Peace be with you.
We respond to the proclamation of the word as together we say the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Loving God, we thank you for the world you created and the opportunities we have to enjoy its beauty and its life-sustaining promise. When we find occasions to breathe in fresh air and exercise outdoors this winter, Remind us of our partnership with you to care for creation. As spring comes closer and the sun shines longer each day, reawaken our hope in your promise of new life to sustain us as the weeks of the pandemic stretch on. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. Ever-present God, we thank you for walking with us through days of uncertainty, as well as times of pleasure and satisfaction, in times of risk and stress. You provide a still point of calm. In times of challenge, you are the source of courage and confidence for us. This day, we pray for those who are struggling with the isolation and frustration the pandemic means for so many. Bring them peace and patience with your love. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. We pray for churches whose common life has been changed so much by months of distancing. Keep us strong in faith and fellowship so that we may continue to serve as agents of healing and hope in our communities. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. We pray for innocent victims of violence around the world. Work through advocates for peace with justice to bring change where it is needed and daily bread to those whose lives and livelihoods have been disrupted. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who are enduring pain and illness, for those who are facing grief and loss, and those whose work on the front lines in our community, in healthcare, education, retail, emergency, and public service. So many are exhausted by these months of pandemic. Be their comfort and encouragement day by day. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. We pray for Aidan, appointed to be our new incumbent, and for Sarah, William and Bennett, as they prepare to leave their parish family in Sudbury to come and be in our midst. That this challenging time of transition might be the beginning of a new and exciting chapter in their lives. 
and for the people of the parish they are leaving behind, for strength and vision as they move into the future God intends for them. Lord, in your love. Hear our prayer. Hear us now as we pray together using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And to end our time of worship together, a Lenten blessing. May the God of mercy transform you by grace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.